Happy Palm Sunday, Tucker First UMC. Um, I'm glad to welcome you to our video worship service today. I hope and pray that you are being safe and being well. And we welcome you and invite you to prepare your hearts for our time of worship today.
please join me in this morning's call to worship. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us all pray together. Almighty God, on this day, your son Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem and was proclaimed king by those who spread their garments and palm branches along his way. Let those branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our Lord and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. In his name we pray, amen. As we come to our time of prayer this week, keep everyone uh, in your church family in your prayers. Of course, keep all of those who are suffering from the coronavirus in your prayers this week and pray for that hopeful day when we will come back together as a church family in person. Let us pray together. Triumphant God, you are the one that we have come to praise. On that day so long ago in Jerusalem, you came on the back of a humble donkey. The people waved their branches, singing their hosannas. They were overjoyed to welcome you, their long-awaited Savior. Today, we wave our branches as well. Though we are not gathered at a dusty roadside, we are not even gathered in our beautiful church building. We wave our branches from home, or while we walk alone throughout our neighborhood. Some of us perhaps have placed a palm branch in our window or on our door. Some have made palms with our children out of construction paper and glue. And yet we still wave our branches in eager anticipation of your entry into our hearts. We wave them as we look forward to the liberation and peace that you promise us. And even as we wave our palms, we know what comes next in the story. Your people turned on you so quickly. 
when they realized that the liberation you bring was not what they were planning on, their joy turned to rage. And God, so it is with us. We have so many ideas of what being a Christian is about, so many doctrines and rules. We try to put your salvation into our terms. And we turn on you when your freedom and love show up in ways that turn us upside down. Jesus, you didn't come in on a white steed decked out in jewels and fine robes. You chose a humble donkey and a few dusty cloaks. And today, instead of showing up on Wall Street or in the White House or on the Council of Bishops, you choose to show up in the wisdom of a child, in a warm casserole at just the right time, or in the lines of poetry written by a dearly loved partner. God, forgive us. Forgive us for turning our backs to you in stubbornness and closed off anger. It is our hearts you came to change. Do your work, Lord. Take our hearts and make them new. Soften them so that we may remember that the one who sits alone in the midst of this pandemic is you. The one who is sick and afraid is you. The one who is worried about how to pay the bills, Lord, it is you. Be with each person suffering in this time and help us to find ways to love each other in the midst of the limitations this virus has placed on us. And as we go through our week, may the palm branch remind us that your freedom and your peace is the only kind worth waiting for. We pray all of this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
This morning, as we think about the offerings that we dedicate to God, I want to again thank you for the faithfulness that you are showing in sending in your offerings to the church office. We are still engaged in ministry. We thank you for what you are doing there. And as we continue to make our offerings available, our hope and our prayer is that we will continue to be in ministry. And when we do move beyond this season with the coronavirus, that we will be better prepared to move back into our full programs of ministry that we offer. Thank you for what you are doing in sending in your tithes and your offerings. And we do encourage you to continue as you are able to make your gifts available. bow with me. I would love to lead us in a prayer dedicating our offerings to God and to the work of God's kingdom. Let us pray. God, we celebrate the generosity and the faithfulness that you show to us in response to all that you have given to us. We bring our tithes and our offerings to give back to you. For the offerings that we have received, that people have faithfully sent in, we dedicate these gifts to you praying that these gifts will enable ministry that will honor you and will allow people to encounter your love. We pray that we will be good stewards of all that has been entrusted to our church, and through these gifts, we will continue to be your servants in the world. It is with that hope and confidence that we dedicate to you the gifts that people have sent in. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21. I'm going to begin reading with verse 1. You will recognize this passage as the traditional Palm Sunday reading of Jesus' entry into the city of Jerusalem. Matthew 21, beginning with verse 1. When they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus gave two disciples a task. He said to them, Go into the village over there. As soon as you enter, you will find a donkey tied up and a colt with it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anybody says anything to you, say that the Lord needs it. He sent them off right away. Now this happened to fulfill what the prophet said. Say to daughter Zion, look, your king is coming to you humble and riding on a donkey and a colt of the donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the donkey and the colt and laid their clothes on them. He sat on them. Now a large crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others cut palm branches off the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds in front of him and behind him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up. Who is this, they asked. The crowds answered, it's the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of God, or the people of God, thanks be to God. Throughout this Lenten season, we have been using the image of snow 
to guide some of our thoughts. And this morning, I'd like to add uh, one more snow image. I, I read that the city of Syracuse, New York, had so much snow a few years ago that the city council got together and they passed a law making it illegal for it to snow anymore. Now, we know how much impact uh, a law like that actually carries. Uh, laws do not control reality. If they did, I think I would probably try to pass a law right now outlawing pollen. Uh, all that yellow stuff from the pine trees is showing up everywhere. Uh, last week, someone sent me um, a picture and it showed their car. Now, their car normally is not yellow, but in the picture, it looked completely yellow. And the caption they had under the, people, uh, under the picture read, In Georgia, our snow falls in the spring, not in the winter, and it's always yellow, not white. <laughs> and I think that's the reality of, uh, of where we are right now in this spring season on this Palm Sunday. Laws cannot change the reality of what's going on in the world around us. It sounds a little bit ridiculous to think that we could pass a law to make it illegal to snow or illegal for the yellow pollen to fall, but that pales in comparison of how ridiculous it is to think that we can control our spiritual formation with legalisms and dogmatic pr propositions. A life of faith cannot come from legalisms. A life of faith stems from love and grace and respect. And if it is to be called Christian faith, we cannot allow legalisms to interfere with the focus on love and respect. In our scripture lesson this morning, Jesus ordered two of his disciples to go find a donkey and its colt and to bring them for Jesus to make his entry into Jerusalem. Let me remind you of what verse 6 is. In verse 6, we read, The disciples went and did just as Jesus had ordered them. Had ordered them. Those words could be interpreted in two very different ways. The disciples' obedience could be interpreted as a rigid legalistic attempt to earn favor and approval, but I don't think that is the context in which we find those words. Obedience can stem from a deep love and respect. Out of the respect that we have, we want to be obedient and we want to do what is asked from us. The very thought of a person entering Jerusalem on a donkey points towards humility. And as the scripture lesson was read, it quoted from the Old Testament that pointed out that coming into the city on a donkey was an act of humility. Later in the Bible, in John 14, Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. The obedience to Jesus is an obedience that comes from love and respect, not from legalism. Any legalistic approach to obedience robs faith of its focus on love. This passage, this Palm Sunday, is focused on humility. The very act of the people shouting Hosanna and offering praise to God shows a proper understanding of God's identity a proper understanding of the people's identity, and a proper understanding of what it means for humans to be in the presence of God's holiness and God's perfect love. Without humility, we tend to get this completely upside down. This passage is about humility. So what is the nature of humility that invites obedience as an act of love and respect? The word humility comes from the same root word as humus. Humus refers to the organic component of dirt. It refers to the ground. And so with that connection, humility, humus, and ground, one way of thinking about humility 
is that humility means that we are properly grounded in life. If we are not properly grounded, then we tend to get things backwards in our relationship with God. Obedience then becomes rigid legalisms, and whatever hosannas we try to offer come across as rather empty rather than communicating true praise. Humility is about being properly grounded. So what does it look like to be properly grounded in our relationship with God so that our hosannas can truly offer praise to God? This morning, I'd like to lift up six statements that reflect being properly grounded in our relationship with God. First of all, when we are properly grounded in our faith, we know that our greatest abilities come as gifts from God. It's not anything that we can claim for our own. They are gifts from God. The second thing about being properly grounded is that when we are properly grounded, we know our shortcomings. We know our faults, but we also know that in spite of those faults, we are still loved by God. A third thing about being properly grounded in our faith is that we know that we have a, fi- a vital role in life, but we also know that no one is indispensable. We do have a vital role to play in life, but cemeteries all around us are full of indispensable people from previous generations. None of us are indispensable, even though we have vital roles to fulfill in life. A fourth thing about being properly grounded in our faith is that we know that our greatest accomplishments in life result from the influence other people have had on us. The things that we accomplish take place because other people have invested time in us and none of us are truly isolated in the things that we accomplish. Another aspect of being firmly grounded, properly grounded, is that we have an understanding that if we judge other people, that usually stems from pride and envy in our own lives, and that is directly opposed to an understanding of what humility involves. And the final thing about being properly grounded in our faith is that it brings to us a great hope that life can be thrilling and meaningful even when we find ourselves in the midst of difficult days. These days can be very trying for us, but being properly grounded in our faith helps us to understand that there is still meaning and purpose in our lives. One of the best understandings of humility that I have ever found, humility and being grounded in our faith, is a prayer that was prayed by Peter Marshall. Listen to his words and see if these don't capture the focus of humility and being properly grounded in our faith. Peter Marshall's prayer was, Lord, where we are wrong, make us willing to change. And where we are right, make us easy to live with. I think that prayer captures the heart of what it means to live with humility in life. Palm Sunday is a day when we lift up our hosannas and our praise to God. This is a day when we focus about being properly grounded in our faith, in humility, and an obedience that comes from love and respect, not legalisms. This is a day to focus on what it means for us to be properly grounded in our faith journey. So how do we accomplish that on this Palm Sunday when we're not able to come together as a community of faith and we are worshiping from our homes? How do we go about celebrating and lifting up our hosannas? This morning, I'd like to make one suggestion of something that you might uh, want to do as a family or as individuals today. Um, We are still encouraged to practice social distancing, and we want to honor that. 
But in that process, we're still hearing that it's fine to get out and walk as long as we maintain at least six feet distance with other people. So I'd like to invite you today on this Palm Sunday to get outside and, and take a walk, to walk around. And as you are out in your yard, I would like to invite you to look for some green plant or something that could represent a palm branch in your life, to cut that or pull it up, to bring it back and put it on the exterior of your door so that it could be a witness to people that on this Palm Sunday, you are seeking to offer your praises to God and to serve God in a humility that comes out of love and respect. This morning, I got up in my yard and uh, went out and cut uh, a, a branch that I'm going to put on my door and use this as a reminder that on this Palm Sunday, I want to offer my hosannas to God. I want to live being properly grounded in my journey of faith with God, and a part of that involves the way that I allow love and respect for God and for God's people to control my life. I don't want to get so caught up in legalisms and things along that line that it undermines the focus on living with love. This Palm Sunday, this day, as we continue to practice social distancing, look for ways that you can take a green plant and allow that to be a symbol of the praise that you offer to God and your desire to want to live with humility in your life journey of faith. God bless you this day as you and your family find ways that you can worship God and use the palms as a symbol of praise to our good and loving God. God bless you this day. invited to live lives in obedience to God. But that obedience is a call for us to live based on love and respect, not just any kind of sheer legalism or legalistic approach to our life of faith. As we think about what that means for us in our lives, there are so many practical applications of that. But in the living of these days, there is one thing in particular where we are called to focus on our obedience. 
as we think about what it means to practice social distancing, what it means to try to take other people's health concerns to heart, what it means for us to live our lives where we can be a part of the solution to this pandemic that is going on. We are being asked to be obedient to some new rules and regulations among us, but our obedience to those should be seen as our respect and love for other people. These are not just legalisms that are being imposed on our lives. These are opportunities for us to show the love and respect that we have for others as we try to also show our love and our respect for God. As you seek to be obedient at this time, I pray that your life will be lived as a life of praise to God and that you will allow your hosannas to sound in everything that you do, including the way that we try to live as a solution to the things going on in our world today. Allow those thoughts of obedience out of love and respect to guide you in the name of the one who is our creator, the one who is our redeemer, and the one who is our sustainer. Allow that grace to guide you in these days. Amen. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come and your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. This morning, we have just a few announcements that I want to lift up, a little bit of a reminder of some things coming up this week during Holy Week. On Thursday evening of this week, there will be a short video, but more than the video, there is a guide that is available for your family to share a love feast in your home, and we hope that that will be a time of celebration on this, uh, this Maundy Thursday, and we think that the love feast can be an appropriate time for us to celebrate an act of worship. Look for that video, a short video that will be available for Thursday evening and also for the information that will come as a guide for how your family can offer a love feast together on Thursday evening. And then on Friday, we will move from Monday Thursday into the Good Friday service, and we will be having a video on Friday evening that will be a service of shadows. That service will focus on the seven phrases that Jesus spoke from the cross, and we think that that will be um, a meaningful time for us to share on Good Friday. There is one thing that your family can do to prepare for that Good Friday service. We are going to begin that service with each home having seven candles that will be lighted at the beginning of the service. And then as we go through the service, at different times, instructions will be given where a candle will be extinguished. And by the end of the service, all seven candles will be extinguished. And then we will lead into the Easter service next Sunday. And for our Easter celebration, we are going to have two worship videos that will be available. One of those will take place in our sanctuary for the traditional aspect of worship. And we will have a separate video that will be available from the chapel for the table. And if you want to look at both of those, by all means, we would invite you to, to, to worship with both of those experiences, but they will both be available and we are going to try to find meaningful ways that we can practice social distancing and at the same time celebrate the great hope and resurrection that our faith brings to us, that we are a people who live with Easter faith. And perhaps these days, more than normal, we need those reminders of the hope that God gives to us as we seek to live as a people with resurrection faith. 
God bless you this week and in the time that is ahead.